Wow, it's really lovely to see so many people. Very daunting for me, but lovely to see so many of you here. Um, so I'm Catherine Smith. Um, I'm a specialist um, occupational therapist in dementia care, and I work on the Poynings unit um, at the Princess Royal Hospital in Haywards Heath. Um, as you know, I'm doing this presentation on behalf of um, Anne Gibbons, who's the head of nursing for older people um, for, the, for the Brighton and Sussex Universities Hospital Trust. I don't work alone. Um, I work with another specialist OT called Lindsay Evans and a dementia nurse specialist called Lucy Frost, who's based down at the county, who are both very sorry that they can't be here today. So today I will be talking about the introduction of the dementia care pathway and the improvements that we are making to care for patients with dementia in our hospitals. So at BSUH, we have adopted the mantra, dementia is everyone's business but we want the dementia pathway to also become everyone's business at the hospital as well. The more staff that are familiar with the pathway, the quicker patients will be assessed and the appropriate referrals and treatment started. This will help in terms of supporting an earlier diagnosis and ensuring that patients receive timely care and, as you know, you'll find a copy in your pack. So to give a bit of background, um, the BSUH Dementia Care Pathway has developed from national drivers, policies and reports. Dementia is high on the national agenda at the moment, as we've heard earlier today. David Cameron's challenge on dementia and Dementia K's report highlights that less than 50% of people living with dementia have a diagnosis. Improvements to, acute, to dementia care in acute settings were highlighted in the Alzheimer's Society report counting the cost in 2009, which stated that there is a growing number of people with dementia and that there is a need to improve the care in acute settings. These reports demonstrate that it takes us longer to diagnose people with dementia and to plan discharges appropriately, which in turn results in a higher cost to the NHS. On a personal note, prior to starting this post, which I started in December, I worked as a community O team for um, rehab teams. And I'd often assess people at home who'd been discharged um, from um, hospital without their memory problems being assessed or addressed whilst they were in hospital. So the pathway trial is now complete and was successful, which means that it's been rolled out trust-wide. The pathway supports early identification of a possible um, dementia and suggests appropriate referrals and investigations to lead to a prompt diagnosis. It aims to ensure that patients go from A&E or AMU straight to a, de a dementia bed, so the right patient to the right ward. But as we know, this isn't always possible due to bed pressures. In that case, we aim to bring the specialist care to the, to the patient. So the pathway alerts the dementia specialist or the mental health liaison team to review the patient and ensure that appropriate professionals and resources support the patient. The pathway demonstrates the route that patients' journey should take and whether there is a confirmed diagnosis of dementia. It advocates a timely and appropriate, and appropriate discharge planning for the patient. So how do we know the pathway is working? Firstly, we have noticed that staff's awareness has been raised. The development of the sequin has coincided with the pathway and both have contributed towards increasing awareness about appropriately investigating and referring patients who may have dementia. Since piloting the pathway, we have seen an increased number of referrals from A&E and AMU and an increase in calls to the dementia specialist and the mental health liaison team for advice or reviews. Prior to this, the majority of the referrals that we received came from the care of the elderly wards. So we all know that dementia care is so much more than just talking about medication. It's making sure that the person with dementia is supported to make choices, feel safe and to provide an environment they are able to make sense of. It's about seeing the whole person, not just the diagnosis. We want patients with dementia to feel empowered. We already have a dedicated acute ward for patients with dementia at the Princess Royal Hospital, which I will talk about next. But our next steps are for a similar ward at the Royal Sussex County Hospital. 
In the meantime, we are making small steps on the wards at the county hospital um, to make them more dementia friendly, such as orientation boards and arranging for reminiscence therapists to come in and do activities. We also, um, as Graham mentioned earlier, have started a three day dementia care education program that's currently running at the county and will be running at the PRH later in the year. So the Boynings unit is described as a shared care model. This is a new approach where both physical and mental health professionals work together in a hospital setting to meet the needs of people with dementia. It has an improved nurse to patient ratio. It's a specialist eight bedded unit where the environment has been adapted using lighting, colour and signage to enable people with dementia to function better. One of the changes made on the ward was to create an activities uh, room. We've created a reminiscence space by wallpapering a corner of the room and have collected memorabilia from the 1940s, 50s and 60s, including a radio, TV set, newspapers and magazines. We also have an orientation board and analogue clock displaying the time, day and date. The criteria of the unit is that a patient must have a diagnosis of dementia, be acutely unwell and require a hospital admission and ideally we wish to take um, patients directly from A&E. My colleague and I who are OTs provide a range of group and one-to-one -one activities that are on and off the ward. Um, these activities are based on the themes taken from cognitive stimulation therapy. The Poining's aim is to make the person's hospital stay as anxiety and stress-free as possible during a naturally frightening and disorientating time. We aim to maintain an individual's well-being through understa understanding and caring for each person's individual needs within an environment less likely to ex exacerbate anxiety. My colleague and I also provide an outreach service to other wards at the Princess Royal Hospital to support patients with dementia. So the unit was initially funded for one year. It was jointly facilitated and funded by West Sussex PCT, Sussex Partnership Trust and Brighton um, and Sussex University Hospitals Trust. Um, initially, the unit was audited against key, four key performance indicators, which was length of stay, discharge destination, reduction in the use of antipsychotic medication and improved patient and carer experience. The audits have shown a reduction in length of stay and readmissions for patients admitted to Poynings Unit. Wherever possible, the Poynings team aims to facilitate discharges to people's own homes or to similar levels, levels of care. From April 2011 and to March 2012, 42% of people admitted from their own home were discharged back to the same address. From April to June 2012, it was increased to 67%. During our first year, we also found that, um, that of the patients admitted from a care environment, 64% were discharged to the same level of care. We have also evaluated patient experience through direct feedback from group work and by using the University of Bradford standardised observational evaluation tool called Dementia Care Mapping. And if you see on this slide, we've got some speech bubbles with um, some feedback from a patient and from a family member. Through this audit, audit, we have secured ongoing funding and are continuing to audit, focusing now on length of stay, discharge destination, and patient, family, and carer experience. A new report is due out later this year. So as we all know, dementia is not an inevitable part of ageing, and when it happens, we have to do all we can to support those affected by it. So thank you for listening to me and bearing with me. Um, I will leave you with this final thought. It has been described as a ticking time bomb affecting more people than cancer or heart disease. But for many of the growing number of people in Britain who suffer from Alzheimer's and other forms of dementia, a diagnosis is still out of reach. Thank you. Thank you.